So today we're going to do a question and answer session. Welcome back friends. So in the comments, I get lots of questions and I get the same questions quite often. So anyway, hopefully this video will take care of a lot of those questions. We're going to cover everything from jelly printing, pa paper, collage, mediums. Um, we're going to do as much as we can today, and then we'll probably have to do another one of these in a couple of months. So keep the questions coming because I will collect them and do another one of these. So let's get started. One of the common questions that I get is what adhesive do I use for collage? There's so many things out there like Mod Podge and Yes um, Paste or whatever it's called. I've never used it. Um, I'm old school, you know, like look at the color of my hair, like really. Um, I've been around for a long time and I have been using Liquitex Gel Gloss Medium forever. And so that is what I continue to use. Now, this is not very fluid. They do have a more fluid one. Um, I have a fluid matte medium. Now the more fluid stuff is for the thinner papers. This is sort of like a medium creamy texture uh, consistency and I find it to be good for just about anything except heavy papers. So if you have heavy more textured things especially um, like one time I, I glued down one of my stencils right onto the board. If you're going to do something like that, then you need a heavy gloss gel. And this one happens to be Golden's heavy gloss, heavy, heavy gel gloss. So this one worked really well, still dries very clear. So I would recommend if you prefer matte, then get the matte version. If you like gloss, get the gloss version. It's all a matter of preference, but to have a fluid one, a heavy one, and then one that's in between is a must. Like really, you should have all three on hand. The thing that I like about the fluid is it comes in this nice little, nice little pop-up and then you can just squeeze it on. So that is at adhesives. Now other mediums are for other things, like you can add texture to boards and you can do all kinds of things like that. But for, as far as adhesives go, these are the, the three that I recommend. It doesn't matter whether you go with Liquitex or Golden, they're, they're high quality. I've never used Mod Podge, so I cannot speak about that. I know a lot of people use it, say it's just as good. So um, I don't know consistency or whatever just know that depending on the weights of your paper you might want to use something different or maybe you can water it down if you're if you need something more fluid question number two do you wash your stencils the answer is no i'm too lazy for that i'm super super busy <laughs> And there's just only so many hours in the day. And usually by the time I'm ready to leave here at the end of the day, I am so exhausted that um, now if I'm not going to be here for a couple of days, I make sure that I, all my brushes are clean, my brayers are clean, everything's clean. But I'm not going to wash my stencils too. And the, the space is too small. I'm not at home. I don't have a, a utility sink where I can use, you know, like a bin and just throw them in the bin and then wash them all up at the end of the day, probably takes two seconds. I don't have that. So I'm sharing with a regular, in a regular office and we have one restroom. I have to be very careful to keep that sink clean. And I cannot just like leave a bin in there that I can throw stencils into. So that's a matter of preference. I don't really think it's necessary. I'm actually inspired by the paint that I leave on my stencils. Let me show you. When I say inspired by the paint left on my stencils, 
I literally glued it to the board in a collage because the paint was perfect for what I was doing and it it like was just what I needed. Um, so you just never know. Um, look, look at the back of this one. Look at that color. I, I don't, <laughs> I keep, I keep putting this side down because I, I don't want to mess that up. I just love the way that looks. And maybe, maybe I do need to cut this one apart and use it in a, in a collage. Anyway, looks fantastic. Let's, let's see if I can find one. It's usually the older ones that um, have been used a lot that I love, but even, but even something like this inspires me. Um, I love when this happens, you know, I get like a little corner. So I look at that and I, and I you know, that little bit of yellow there, like it inspired, like right, right there is a color palette that just like, hmm, okay, maybe that, you know, is a color thing that I'm going to use today, you know? So that's why, well, that's not why I don't. Look, look at this one. I, I don't I don't even want that to get ruined. I want I want to use this or photograph and make a printable out of it or something, but I just love the way that looks. Oh, here's a fun one. Look at this. Look at that color blocking that happened on this stencil. Um, how, how much fun is that? So this, this is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of stuff that inspires me. So that is an added benefit to uh, not cleaning my stencils. So somebody also asked if I clean the rubber bands. And of course I don't clean the rubber bands. Um, rubber bands are, I have a huge bag of rubber bands if I want fresh rubber bands, but I actually think they work better on the plate when they've got a little paint on them or when they're sort of old and dried up a little bit, which was the original ball of rubber bands that I had. It was, they were, they kind of like, if you tried to stretch them, they'd break. They were so old, but they worked great on the plate. So I, yeah, I wouldn't waste my time washing rubber bands. Time, time is of the essence here. You know, we need to be creative most of the time and I, I do like to keep my place neat, but I don't, I like to save time where I can. Where do you find your texture plates? It's oh, a good question. Because my favorite one, which is this one, and I, this is the one that I get the most questions about. So yeah, it's fabulous. Um, I've, I've been using this one for about maybe four years now. It, it builds up with paint and then I, I peel it off. Let me show you that. And then I end up with something like this, like a mesh that is just pure paint. It's pure acrylic paint. And depending on what si side, yellow on the underside and dark on, the, on this side. So you have to wait till it really builds up and then you can kind of work it and peel it off. Right now, I think it was last week, I cleaned it and um, I got a bunch off. You, you can't wet it, you just have to peel it. And, and you have to wait, like right now, there's not enough paint on here for it to peel up. So it's like making a paint skin. And you could probably do that with other of these texture plates as well, as long as they connect the way this one connects. Now. Let's, let's talk about this one <laughs> again. Oh, so I had purchased at Michael's a set of, let's see, I think it was three. Yeah, so it was these three. So I also, obviously, I've never used this one. It's like a wood grain. It doesn't appeal to me. This is kind of fun. I've used it a few times. Um, I do like, love, 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 this uneven grid pattern. Um, the other side is just, it, it almost makes like a, almost like a canvas texture. 
so it's also very interesting but I don't think I've used it that much and I've used this one a lot because it's also and this one anyway you cannot buy these sorry um, so the the one that people want the most which is this one I, I wish I could remanufacture these for you but um, they've discontinued them at least at Michaels I have looked everywhere for them usually you find this type of a texture plate in the um, clay department like where the Sculpey clay uh, is and uh, they do now sell the, this pack well I think I bought two packs and there are packs of three and I cannot remember which one goes with which but um, this is kind of an interesting pattern it's like a like an animal print um, not as that one doesn't thrill me that much this one's more of a, a floral you know botanical um, this one kind of reminds me of a reef I wish the pattern was bigger and not quite so delicate um, and this might actually peel off and allow me I haven't used it enough to this side I've never used same with this is another animal print but I've used this side and another this is like a leafy pattern another animal print that I have yet to use but they do still sell these in that Sculpey department um, another thing you can do and I just got this at the dollar store and this also allows you to peel off and that is a trivet and these are very pliable and you can cut them to shapes this this is one that I would uh, highly recommend it's a lot of fun and this pattern because it is all connected will do will peel off like this if you get enough paint on there it will there's a piece missing right here that did peel off at one point anyway I got to get more layers of paint on this one in order for it to happen but anyway so the other thing you could do for texture plates is the cardboard where's my cardboard so I, I temporarily lost my cardboard um, so I, I will insert a clip here that shows me using it I love um, and I'm going to create some more soon because I even the one that I have is uh, has a, a lot of buildup of paint on it and it's not not doing such a great job but um, they're easy to make and we all have so much cardboard uh, I don't know about you but I'm always cutting up boxes and throwing out boxes every week we order so much online these days I have a box on the floor over here right now that I'm also thinking of cutting into smaller pieces so that I can do exactly that make a couple of texture plates another thing I've been playing with lately is lino cut I hadn't done lino cut since high school that, you know once I went to college and I, I never did printmaking or anything like that in college so I uh, just never did it again but I thought let me, let me just get some and let's just play and I you know I got the tools and everything so let me know in the comments below if you want to see um, how to do this it's actually pretty easy you just have to be careful because these are sharp sharp tools but I um, I made some with some cool patterns and I love what happens in between when you don't when you don't so do such a great job of cleaning it up I do that intentionally I leave because I want those those marks and I I tried one that was just you know like a messy pattern inspired by this this negative space in here just to lift off um, when I'm jelly, jelly printing in some areas now I wish this was a little thinner and easier for me to cut maybe into circles and make little stamps with it so I'm I'm kind of in the market for something like that so that's what I use for texture plates I do 
I did do a video on how you can make texture plates using a molding or modeling plate paste, depending on what brand you buy. That's what it might be called. Um, and you can push it through a stencil and create, um, you know, a texture plate. So there's all sorts of things though around your house that you can use for texture and um, just just look around the house you'd be surprised what you find that's how I discovered I just came up across my rubber band thing and I thought okay let's try rubber bands why not so look around the house you might find some interesting things that have texture on them and maybe even in the trash right it could be packing materials besides cardboard um, all kinds of things can be used to create texture on the plate so I think we really covered texture maybe this is one of the biggest questions is what do you do with all these prints so of course my easy answer is collage but let's face it gel printing can be a real addiction <laughs> It, it could become, become an obsession. It's so much fun. And um, the better you get at it, the more you want to do it. And then you just have stacks and stacks and stacks of papers. The next step is collage. Why not? So that's why you have to get your gel medium. And um, I would suggest starting, if you haven't done any collage, I wouldn't start with like a wood panel or a canvas or anything like that. Start with a journal. I highly recommend these small Soho journals. They are, the paper is fabulous. The paper does not curl. It's a good beginner size, not so intimidating. The bigger you get, the more intimidating it is. So start small with a little book like this, but any, um, you know, any good quality paper that isn't going to curl on you, I, you could also use. Uh, another question I got just today was, uh, why would somebody collage in a journal? Like, what is the purpose? So that's kind of fits in the same thing. Like, why not? Um, if you're just starting out, you're learning, but even after you are a, you know, a professional, especially if you're in, in the position that I'm in right now, where I'm pushing my work into a different direction, and I still haven't figured out what that direction is yet. The, the small journal, I have three different size journals, but the, all three of them are helping me determine what that new style is going to be. And it's really fun to look back, like to see what I was doing six months ago, eight months ago, um, and how the work has changed you know so if I always had to like work on wood or canvas and work large I, I wouldn't get as much done so in these in these small books you can get a lot done you can do them daily if you have the time and you you know you just grow a little bit more with each one and so I think it's a it's a, a good practice to do like a, a fairly regular schedule doesn't have to be every day it could be once a week whatever you whatever feels comfortable for you and it's great to have lots of papers to choose from why not just paint on the paper directly you can paint directly on paper and I see lots of people they create papers you know black and white papers where they just make marks and they make, they draw circles, tons and tons of circles on one piece of paper where they can tear or whenever they want something like that. They make dots, they make dashes, they make chevron patterns, you know, whatever your, you know, mark is. And that's fine for something that is, you know, you're looking to create something that's going to add contrast or a pattern. But if you want something that is more complex, the gel plate ends up giving you an unexpected result. Like frequently, the result is unexpected. You know, you, you try to plan these things and it never comes out quite the way you planned, but sometimes it's better than how you planned. 
and even prayer sheets. I, I, I save the prayer sheets because sometimes they're like terribly fun. <laughs> um, I love, especially if I have multiple colors on my brayer, and then I, I use the brayer sheet to clean off the brayer and this beautiful smushy pattern happens. And, and then I put another layer on top of that and another layer as I'm working with different colors. And I see this beautiful thing happen. And then real quick, I snatch it off the desk so I don't ruin it. And I frequently use them in collage because they make, um, they don't have a lot of pattern. They just have color and, and it's layers of color. And that's what you don't get by just painting on paper is those layers of color. The thing that I love about gel printing is what happens when you start layering with different stencils or even the same stencil in a different direction and the intersection of the patterns and how they, they kind of work together. That is not something that you can paint. If you can, then you, you're better than me. I don't know many people who could do that. So that's why we don't just paint on paper. We, it's not that I don't. I have done where I've taken, especially something like, like a Posca pen and just made marks because and I notice I have black and I have white because this is how I get contrast. I could also do it with a brush. If I really want some nice brush strokes, um, I love using like old, like hardware store brushes where the bristles are almost kind of pointy on the end. We use it as a dry brush and you can paint directly onto um, papers, tissue, um, deli papers, if you want it to go transparent. Um, yeah, you could definitely do that, but that does not replace the gel plate. It's, it's nice to have both. That would be my answer. It's nice to have both. All right, let's, let's talk about cleaning our tools. So there's a couple of things that I use to clean the plate, for instance. I like to use, well, my, my favorite thing is to use uh, hand sanitizer. We all have hand sanitizer. <laughs> I keep mine right here in the front of the desk. I am starting to run low. I got the pump kind. That's like the easiest way for me to really, like if I'm, if I'm looking to finally get the grunge off the edges and the corners and all of that. I do like to use baby oil once in a while, but not that often. And the reason is it then makes the surface um, a little bit greasy. And then I get a lot of blooming going on, la lacing, blooming, whatever you want to call it. So if I'm planning to gel print that same day, I'm definitely not going to use baby oil. If I'm probably not going to use the plate for a couple of days, then I'll, that conditions the plate really well, makes it like almost like new, and then put it between two pieces of um, copy paper and store it like that. And some of that oil will get absorbed into the paper. Um, the first time you use it, you still might have some lacing for the first couple of prints, but it's, uh, it, it, it is definitely good to condition your plate every now and then for longevity. But, um, in terms of quick cleaning, I would use baby wipes, um, experiment with different brands. Uh, I just use the one from Walgreens. It's like a inexpensive Walgreens baby wipe. It's called Well Beginnings. Um, it's unscented. I can't stand to have anything. I'm, I'm a fragrance free pair person. <laughs> this one works really well. I did have another brand that I bought in the, in the baby aisle. It didn't work that good. So this one I know works. Um, another thing. And I, and I keep saying I'm going to do this, but I haven't done it yet. Murphy's oil soap. Now, I use that for my sprayers. And so I have a bottle of it. And 
what I do is I put some war warm water in a bin. You see that white bin right there? That's what that's for. I put warm water in it. I just dump some of the Murphy's oil soap. I don't measure it or anything. Kind of swirl it around, mix it, and soak them. And I find that it only takes a couple hours and the paint just like separates from the, the rubber brayer and just kind of peels right off in, in big sheets. It's, it's amazing. But if I'm not going to be, if I'm doing it at the end of the day and I'm not going to be here for a couple hours, I leave it overnight and the next day I just, you know, rinse it off, clean it off. So anyway, Murphy's oil soap. Now I have not tried this yet but I'm going to add it to a water bottle, like just a little bit, and try just squirting that on the plate and wiping it off maybe with a baby wipe. I, I bet that would work really well, um, but I haven't tried it yet, so don't hold me to that. Okay, so that cleaning is definitely, if you want your brayers to last, you want your gel plates to last, you have to take care of it. So another question that I get is, how do you store your gel plates? So I used to actually use one of those Ranger tin things, you know, to put the gel plate in. But that was when I had one. I have too many now. <laughs> um, so I found this little, it's supposed to be a little paper thing from Ikea. It only holds up to an 8x10 plate. But it makes it real easy for me to access it. And I don't only store plates in this thing, but it's my two night my two eight by tens can sit on top of each other with paper in between um, on one of these shelves. And then I have a, a six inch that goes in another another shelf and they pull out so it's real easy to access them. The nine by twelve I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to store that. Um, probably just in one of my Alex drawers. And then I, I will eventually get a larger one, although right now I don't see why. Um, I know a lot of people have the 12 by 12. They have even bigger than that. I am not doing papers for finished compositions. Um, as other artists are, I am creating collage papers. So it all depends what size plate you get and it all depends on what it is you're doing. But definitely store it properly between papers. Do not use that pl piece of plastic that it came with. You can use the um, clamshell that it came in. You could keep it in there. That's what I used to do. I used to each one I just kept it the clamshell and then I would stick it in my Alex drawers. But now my Alex drawers are being used for my collage papers <laughs> and for my different kinds of printing papers. So another question that I get, what deli paper is that you use? No, a gel print session does not happen without me using deli paper at some point. And I really, really like the one that I'm using. I got, I get it on Amazon. It's flat. It comes like nine, uh, maybe nine and a quarter by 13, the sheet. And they come flat. They're very different than the ones that come in those little pop-up boxes, which I guess are real deli papers. Like they're, you know, the kind that if you own a deli and you're making sandwiches, you, you're using I think it's a Logan brand where they pop up out of the box. Two reasons why I don't like that. It's folded in half and the, it's different. That's all I can say is it's different. Um, this deli paper that I get, it literally says in the description that it's perfect for crafts, printing, mentions gel printing. It is excellent. It picks up quickly and also goes very transparent when you're gluing it down in collage. So, and it holds up really well, like, like almost like wet strength tissue does. It's, it, it can handle the wet media. Now, the very first time I used it in a collage, which was almost two years ago now, 
I was disappointed because I went, I glued it down over a black area. And where the black paint was, you could see the deli paper. So I was disappointed because I thought it was supposed to go transparent, <laughs> you know. But it does go transparent on all other colors. But if you put it against something really black, or if you're using a glue stick, it's not going to go transparent. So you need to use a wet medium like a gel medium, Mod Podge, those kinds of things in order for that transparency to happen. Glue sticks, it's not going to happen. But I, it's my favorite. And as far as I know, you can only get it on Amazon. I've never seen it anywhere else. Leave a comment below if you have. Um, but that's my favorite. I have used the other kind in the pop-up box when I was at a friend's studio. And I was, wow, like this is not good. <laughs> I didn't like it. Okay, one more question. And that is, what brayer do I like to use? And soft or hard rubber. These are the two that I have. Let me show you the, see this one? This is like, so it pops out so you can clean it really easily. Then it just kind of pops back in. But the reason why I like, these are both speedball is they have this little resting area here. When you have ink on your brayer, you do not want to rest it down on a piece of paper like this. It will stick. So you flip it over and you, you rest it nicely like that. But both of these do that well, right? So the only thing that I, I like this one, it's got a nice handle, very comfortable, um, but this does not pop out. So, um, when I soak it, you know, my metal's getting all kind of funky. Anyway, I like this because I can pop these out, dump them in the Murphy's oil soap, and uh, my, you know, my handle is still getting, <laughs> you know, it's going to get paint on it, let's, let's face it. But um, anyway, those are two that I would recommend, and they're both soft soft rubber. Yeah, that's what I would recommend. Okay, so that was pretty extensive. So, you know, keep the questions coming. I will do another one of these maybe in a couple of months. So hopefully your question will be there. And I also answer, I try to answer as many comments as I possibly can. It is getting a little overwhelming. And um, so if I haven't gotten to you yet, trust me, I will. I've just, I'm trying to do a little bit every day because if I Right now, I think I have a buildup that I probably would take me hours to get them all answered, but I, I'm working on it. <laughs> I promise you I'm working on it. Anyway, thank you for watching today. I hope that I covered something that will help you a little bit in your jelly printing practice and hopefully encourage you to do some collage as well. And don't forget to create, inspire, and share. I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.